Hi, I'm Ronell Coburn, Master Life Prince, Hand Analyst, and Founder of Life Purpose Now and the Life Purpose Academy. I've been reading hands as my full-time living and life since 1998, and I'm excited to welcome and introduce you to Stop Guessing and Start Living. Discover your real life purpose blueprint so you can wake up to the life you love to live. Humans have asked big questions about themselves forever, like, who am I? Why am I here? What should I do with my life? What makes my life worth living? Why does life purpose matter so much? The bottom line is, life feels better when you feel your life has meaning. When you have a sense of place in life, when you have a reason for being and you know who you are and you know what to do and you feel you matter to others in the world. You feel better when life has meaning and clarity of direction. Life just feels easier and more satisfying when you have a clear sense of purpose. Without purpose, life can feel meaningless. You can feel lost, confused, frustrated, uncertain, aimless, anxious, hopeless, even helpless, apathetic, depressed, bored, stuck, disappointed, numb, stifled. You might find yourself asking, what's the point? Why bother? Is this all there is? Who am I? What do I want? And what should I do? But perhaps life purpose is even more important because when you are living a life without purpose, you can feel miserable in so many ways. In my late 20s, I had a complete career crisis meltdown because it was so off purpose and felt all of these things. During this time, I started to realize I was always interested in people and what made them who they are. I started researching going back to school to become a psychotherapist, but somehow it wasn't quite right. One night at a bookstore, I pulled a book off the shelf in the psychology section and another stuck to it and fell on the floor. I bent over to find The Laws of Scientific Handreading, originally published in 1900, lying at my feet and took it home. Over the next six months, I started looking at people's hands and talking to them. And after two of them asked if I'd heard of the International Institute of Hand Analysis, I made a phone call. Finding life purpose hand analysis and stepping into my own life purpose changed everything for me. Studying hands and becoming a professional hand analyst is not at all what I thought I might do with my life. If someone tried to tell me that I'd find and express my life purpose through starting a business to read hands and founding a school to teach it to others, then write a book about it, which landed me on national television, and travel the world to speak and teach, I wouldn't have believed a word of it. It wasn't all easy. I had a lot to learn about how to start, run, and succeed at business, but the journey has been deeply fulfilling. Before I got on purpose, I never would, I th would have thought I'd be so fortunate to meet so many amazing people from all over the world and be invited into their lives in such a personal way. My life purpose is successful, inspirational messenger in the spotlight, and I strive every day to express my purpose in everything I do. I feel extremely honored to get to express my life purpose through reading, teaching, and sharing the amazing and empowering world of hands and fingerprints to help so many others live their best lives too. So first, there's problem number one. To really talk about life purpose, we first have to know what we are talking about. What is life purpose? Life purpose isn't easy to define, and most of the popular ideas of what it is are well-meaning but incorrect. To start, it's easier to look at what life purpose is not in order to better understand what it is. Most current ideas about life purpose focus on 
three sets of things. The first one is principles or values. And these are the things that are about your beliefs. You may believe in caring for other people, in being honest, in being cooperative. You may not believe that you can trust other people, uh, or you may have a belief in hard work. We all have many, many beliefs. Another thing that different systems of figuring out your life purpose will focus on these days is your talents and your skills, what you're good at. You might be good at washing dishes, you might be good with computers, you might be good at investigating and asking questions. Maybe you're good at helping people find things to do, like the concierge at a hotel, or maybe you're good at growing things or saving money. These are all things that you can be good at. But just because you're good at something doesn't mean it's your life purpose. Uh, I like to wash dishes. I actually enjoy it very much, but that doesn't mean I want to wash dishes for a living or do it all the time, right? It doesn't give me a deeper sense of meaning. So what you're good at, it's great. It might make you feel good, fantastic, but that doesn't mean it's a life purpose. The third area is your goals, and goals are things that you want to achieve, things you want to do, like winning a gold medal at the Olympics, or climbing a mountain, or finding love and getting married, or buying a house, or losing weight. Goals are great. We all need goals. We all have things we want to achieve, but once we've completed a goal, does that mean we don't have a life purpose anymore or that we have to start all over again trying to find another goal uh, so that we have another purpose? Hmm. Really none of these things or any combination of them is your life purpose. And that's because Values and goals can all change. You can even hold somebody else's values or make goals for yourself that are about what other people think you should do, right? Um, values and goals can all change and goals also end once achieved. Our life purpose is something longer and more enduring than that. It goes beyond all of these things and does not change. You have a life purpose also as long as you are alive and you only have one life purpose for your entire life. You don't have to keep figuring out over and over and over again, what's my life purpose? You have the same purpose, but you can express it in different ways over your lifetime, but still there'll be a core there that whatever you're doing will be feeding that core life purpose. So what is life purpose? Life purpose is your core self. It's your deepest sense of identity, of who you are, what you're built for. And your life purpose and this sense of identity does not rely on particular circumstances or specific relationships with others. It's something that's inside you. It's your sense of yourself. It's your inner sense of deep meaning and what brings you deep meaning, what's deeply meaningful and fulfilling for you. Life purpose is your internal reason for being, for existing. And another way to put it would be that life purpose is your soul's intention for this lifetime. Again, who you want to be and what you want to do because of who you are. So there's now problem number two. Problem number one, what is life purpose? Problem number two is where can I find my life, life purpose? If values, talents, and skills are not a life purpose, then where can we find 
our most purple purposeful selves and lives? And how do we stop wasting time and energy looking for purpose in all the wrong places and then ending up doing nothing more than guessing at what it is? So we're still left with the big question of who am I and the frustration of not actually knowing or being able to live our real life purpose when the answers to these questions are actually very easy to find and are sitting literally right under our very noses. Once you get the answers, you can stop wasting your time searching and instead put your precious time and energy into living it instead. As it turns out, you've been carrying around your own personal instruction manual for life in your unique fingerprints since five months before you were born. That's right, our fingerprints form five months before we're even born. The answer to what is my life purpose has been right under your nose, written right onto your own body for all that time, just waiting to be discovered. It's just hidden in plain sight. So why fingerprints? Why do fingerprints show our life purpose? What we know so far is that fingerprints are our unique personal identification system that's printed onto our bodies. Law enforcement has used fingerprints to identify people physically since the mid-1800s. It's also now known that fingerprints are direct expression of DNA and are deeply connected neurologically to our brains. Did you know that there are more connections between the brain and the hands than between the brain and any part of the body? Also, that neuroscience is now finding DNA markers for personality and behavior traits. Given what we know right now about fingerprints, DNA, and the brain, and more is getting discovered every day, it isn't much of a stretch that fingerprints identify us more than physically, but also tell us about who we are as well. Every person's fingerprints are unique, just like snowflakes are unique. And really, fingerprints are just a language. And they're a language that anyone can study and learn to read. This system of decoding the fingerprints for life purpose was originated by Richard Unger. He's been reading and researching hands full time since the 1970s and he founded the International Institute of Hand Analysis in 1982. This is where I studied for seven years and have now been reading and teaching Richard's Life Prints, Fingerprint and Hand Analysis full time as a master hand analyst and master teacher since 1998. So how do fingerprints work? This is one of the biggest questions people ask me. One is, why haven't I heard from this about this? And it's because it's relatively more recent. It takes time to get the word out about new ideas. And then the next one is, well, how does this work? So how this works is there are four basic types of fingerprints that are possible. The whorl, which is this red one that's round. It makes a completely circular pattern and you can see the little drawing at the bottom here. It's just a circle, just like the fingerprint. It's not very mysterious. The blue one is called a loop and that's because it comes in from one side and it turns around and it loops and it goes right back out of there, right back out the side. If you follow it, you'll see that the lines come in from the side of the finger here and turn around and loop right back out of there. The third type is called a tented arch and it looks like hands praying or an upside down letter T. Uh, it doesn't do any looping, it doesn't do any turning. It's more just like an upside down T shape or like a little tent with the pole holding the fabric up at the top. The last basic type 
are arches and arches just make an arch they just they're the flattest print that kind of just go up and over no twists no turns no t's they're the simplest they're the closest thing to a flat line so we got four basic types of prints what you need to know is that these types can also combine to make subtypes so there's more than four types of fingerprints possible and all the other ones are combi different combinations of these four types. You might, if you want to, get out a magnifying glass or get out your phone camera and you can use the magnification of the phone camera to try to look at your prints. Just make sure you get some good light. It's really fascinating to try and look at them when you haven't really paid any attention to them before and you just discover them right there. So you can, we've got four basic types and then combinations or subtypes, but then you've also got 10 fingers, most people do anyway. Uh, and so it depends on which types you've got and which fingers they're on. And you can have any combination across the fingers. You could have one whorl and nine loops, or you could have eight loops and one tented arch and one arch, or you could have 10 whorls. You can have any combination of the types and the subtypes within your 10 fingers. And so we have to look at which types. We also have to look at how many of each type, and we have to look at which fingers they're on to determine your life purpose. We have to look at all 10 fingers and all the prints together. We can't just look at one and figure anything out. We have to see all of them. And at the bottom here, this is just a picture of a fingerprint chart like we draw after looking at your prints um, so that we can more easily figure out what you're, you've got and do that counting. Now, we've been talking about life purpose, but the fingerprints actually have more in them than your life purpose. There are three layers of information in your life, in your fingerprints, and they're all very, very important. So the first one is your life purpose, who you want to be and what you need to be doing about it, who you are and what that helps you understand what to do with yourself everywhere in your life, not just at work, at work, at home, in everything you do. The life purpose is for life and it's about everything in your life. We also have a life lesson and nobody wants to have one of those really because life lesson is extremely challenging. It's an aspect of, of ourselves that we have the least amount of experience with and so we're here to learn our lesson and learn about our lesson over our entire lives. And it can be very, very challenging at times. And most of us really wish it would go away because it's like that rock that you keep tripping over in your life. And it can be frustrating and it takes a lot of effort and a lot of awareness and a lot of trying new things and experimenting to figure out how to work with it. But the life lesson is very, very important because being able to do your life lesson sort of gives you the fuel for doing your life purpose. It's something the life purpose needs. So we've got to do our life lesson in order to live our life purpose. And then there's a third layer of information in the fingerprints and it's called the life school. And the life school is like the water you swim in, which is why I use a swimming picture here. The life school is sort of the hardest one to describe. It's what your lesson and your purpose swim in. We could say it's like the color of the water you swim in and um, it has its own high potentials and it has its own challenges as well. And the way I like to explain this is through the idea of swimming. You know, if I want to, if I'm a swimmer and I want to swim, then I've got to learn how to swim, right? I've got to say, do the breaststroke. 
And uh, if I do the breaststroke, then I can be a swimmer. This is like the life purpose. It's who I am and what I can and want to be doing because of it. I'm a swimmer and I want to do the breaststroke. Now, the next thing, the life lesson is like that part of your body that just doesn't want to work right. I like to say it's like your left leg that just doesn't know how to kick. It's really hard to teach it how to kick. It's always wanting to do something else and it makes it really hard to swim because it just doesn't work right. But if you pay attention to it and you keep working with it, you start to be able to kick with it and then you get to keep learning how to kick better and better so that that left leg can support you in doing your swimming, right? If some big part of your body doesn't work, uh, then when you're swimming, then you're going to have trouble. Right? You can only swim as well as the left leg kicks. That's the life lesson. The third piece, the life school, it's like the water. To do any of this, to swim, to practice your swimming stroke, to become the best swimmer you can be, to work on that left leg, you have to get into the water of the life school. you got to get into that area. And then once you are working in your life school, working on your life lesson, doing your life purpose, everything is working together at the same time. And being able to tell what's giving you trouble when it comes up or when you need to focus more on the swimming stroke, the life purpose and whatever challenges it's got. Or another time you might realize, wait, that's my life lesson giving me trouble. I need to work on that left leg. Or maybe I'm not doing so well somehow with the water itself and I need to do something about that. In your life, when you're able to identify how things work, what's giving you trouble, what's even working right and to do more of it, life gets easier to live in, to navigate. It gets easier to make decisions to see what you want to be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, what you don't want to be doing. Understanding this soul psychology system, we call it, of life purpose, life lesson, and life school is incredibly powerful. It helps you understand everything that's going on in your life and what to do about it. Every minute of every day for the rest of your life, if you learn these things and you pay attention to them and you gain awareness of them and you learn how to take the best action you can take on your school, on your lesson, on your purpose, then you just keep moving in the right direction. And the best thing is it all is what gives your life such deep, deep meaning and a sense of fulfillment that's really tied deeply to who you are in your core, right? So it's so interesting when we look at your fingerprints, when I look at people's fingerprints, it's like looking at an acorn, like a seed of possibility and a seed of potential, right? It's, I'm able to see the oak tree, the full grown oak tree that you can become if you work towards and keep growing into your full potential, the potential of your life purpose. Your fingerprints are an indication of your full potential and what it needs to grow. And it's so important to know that just like a seed, you know, just because there's a seed doesn't mean it will grow. It needs the right things to grow. You, it needs the right environment. It needs to be watered. It needs the right soil to be, get, be in. It needs the right amount of life, uh, light. And it's the same thing with our lives and our life purposes. We have to give our life purpose and our life lesson and our life school, our soul psychology, we need to give it what it needs to grow and thrive so that we can too, we can grow and thrive over our lifetimes 
keep growing into our life purpose. I'm going to wrap up here with a couple of uh, case studies of clients I've had over the years. And this first one, uh, Victoria, oh, she's such a delightful person. And she wrote me this testimonial. When I read Victoria, she was very frustrated. Um, she was a successful life coach, an attention deficit disorder life coach, helping people with ADD in their lives, particularly students. And um, she had this idea for producing a program uh, that could help students who have ADD. And she spent three years trying to get somebody else to be like the star of that show, the person in the video. And it just wasn't working out and she couldn't find somebody who would do it um, and who would present her ideas about it. So when I saw her hands, I saw that her life purpose is leader in the spotlight. And she just said, oh, who, me? Me, the one on the videos? I don't know about that. And it hit her. Um, that who's who's better to do that to be the leader in the spotlight sharing her wisdom and her knowledge uh in in an educational video so she went ahead and did it and did it really quickly in one day and uh it just opened all kinds of opportunities up for her for speaking and teaching. And she also ended up on uh, television for being an expert in this area. And Victoria had to stop trying to work behind the scenes. And she had to present her creative ideas herself. This is what leaders do. Is they're willing to stand up and impact and influence other people. And in her case, she was also supposed to be a leader in the spotlight where she put her work in a form that more people could benefit from it, right? By getting in front of rooms of people to speak with as many people as possible who are interested in the room, by creating a video DVD that then could go out to people who needed what she had to offer and she had to get herself her her life purpose required that she got herself directly into the position to receive respect leaders need respect and appreciation people who are creative who present their work need to put themselves in places where they can be appreciated for it they got to put themselves in the spotlight and once she put herself in that position everything shifted and it opened up for her. So exciting for me to just translate those fingerprints, tell somebody what they say, and when they take it to heart and do what their life purpose is asking of them, things can change and often very quickly. The second person, Beth, uh, when, when I read her hands, uh, she was doing like copy editing work um, and some kind of writing, but it wasn't her own writing. And her life purpose is master communicator with a message for the world. So the writing piece was correct. And she loved writing and she loved doing her own writing, but it, she didn't even think that it was possible to somehow turn it into her full-time profession. And so once she learned her life purpose, she really focused and committed herself to putting more time into it, especially into writing fiction. She writes science fiction. And uh, she now, over the years, has published her books. And also through the process of getting committed to writing, she's also ended up coaching other people who want to write novels, particularly science fiction novels, and she's made her living 
doing that, but she had to really stand up to the challenge of committing herself and sort of doing everything that needed to be done to actually sit down and write um, and then to publish her books and then to gain the experience and gain the confidence that she could help other people do the same thing. So she had to stay committed. And once she did, she found out much more was possible um, than she realized. And again, very exciting to get to be in touch with her over many, many years now and watch her life purpose evolve, watch her evolve her life purpose, keep stepping into it and stepping up to it. So if you are interested in learning more about the power of your life purpose and how to live it, come over and visit my website. It's at lifepurposenow.com and there's more information there. Um, sign up on my email list uh, to get notifications of free trainings when they get released, new articles. I write informational articles regularly and you can get updates on special offers and upcoming courses. I also have a published book um, and a Simple Life Purpose report that you can also get as well as consultations. Um, if you want to get started in a really easy way with your life purpose, you can get a fingerprint Print, figure printing kit uh, that you take your prints and send in to me and you get a report and you get a copy of my book and you can re start reading about it and changing your life as fast as you'd like to. So thank you so much for your time today, uh, for tuning into this, and I hope that you get as excited as I do about fingerprints and your life purpose that's right there ready to go as soon as you are.